welcome to Great British Ghosts. Today I've come to the ancient forest of Dean, which is known for its myths and legends. Later I'll be going to Clearwell Caves to find out about the ghosts there, but first I've come to Colford. Now, some haunted places have just one great ghost story. Others have so many, it's hard to remember them all. Well, this, the Angel Hotel, is one of those places. The Angel Hotel claims to be the oldest public house in Colford, dating back to the 1650s. Over the years, it's been used as an excise house, a mortuary, and of course, a coaching inn. Ghostly tales have surrounded it for centuries, and sightings of ghosts and other paranormal experiences continue up to the present day. Adam Heath, the local paranormal researcher and ghost hunter, who spent many nights inside the hotel, agreed to show me around. And how haunted is it? Well, in our, our experience, this is a very, very active, very uh, haunted building. So. And where do you have most of your experiences? Well, this is the raw room. This is yeah. one of the rooms that is one of the most active uh, rooms in the building. Oh, well, thanks. And what's happened in here? Well, we were, um, we were here one night. It was actually on uh, one of our first investigations. We had some equipment set up on the bed here, um, what we call trigger objects. We had tarot cards, a few things set up. We had uh, a K2 meter, an EMF meter, on the side of the bed here, which I've got in the pocket here. What is that? It just measures uh, EMF, which stands for electromagnetic fields. It gives a visual representation on the LEDs. Everything that uh, gives off a small electrical charge, and there's a theory that high levels of EMF or spikes in EMF are linked with paranormal activity. So if there was a ghost or a spirit, it would have energy and it would set that thing off? Yeah. In our experience, there's, it's well documented that that can happen. But we had um, some trigger objects on the bed here. We had this set up here on the bed like so. And I was over there, that side of the bed. The rest of the team were this side. And we were asking for something to happen. And this actually was thrown off the bed. How do you explain that then? I mean, do, is it a spirit that actually picks it up and throws it? Is it some sort of energy force that, that magnetises it to the other side of the room? Well, we don't know. This is the thing, you see. Anything that can be outside the um, realm of scientific explanations can be classed as paranormal. We can't explain that one. It was actually set up back here and it was flown off the bed, so uh, we don't know. Any other experiences in here? Yeah, we were sat... Um, Another time on our first investigation, I was sat here on the bed. My friend Tim was here, the fellow investigator. And we had what's called an orb come down from here, fly past us and split into two. Now, people think orbs are, again, some sort of spiritual energy, but surely a lot of them can be explained away. About 99% of them can be explained away by dust, uh, water vapour, any sort of airborne particle reflected in flash or the infrared of a camera. But there's certain ones that we can definitely f say that we can't explain away. We've caught about four in 18 months that we're not sure we can't explain away. And once again, that could be classed as paranormal. Why did this one convince you? It was just the way also that it split in two and the way it moved. It just moved against the air draft. It, was, it just appeared unnatural and it split in two. And just at the same time, Tim blinked as if, almost as if the orb itself went through him. What about apparitions? Have you seen any of those yeah. in here? Yeah. In this room itself, we've had um, two people have witnessed it in one night. We had an event here. There were some chaps down from Coventry, and um, he walked through this door on his own. Now, these guys are really sceptical. They come along, they have a laugh, they just have a drink. Their wives are the ones who are into the paranormal. And he walked into this room on his own, and he saw a figure bent over this bed in just a nightdress. Um, so, of course, he just walked straight back out. Um, he was looking a bit sheepish, and his wife said, well, what's wrong with you? And he said, well, nothing, nothing at all. And she, she just knew something was wrong. He said, well, come on, what's going on? And he said, well, we've just walked in this room, and there's a woman bent over the bed in a nightdress. So they came back into the room, and, of course, no one was here. We've had guests who come here and then they won't stay because they believe that people have got into bed with them um, several times over a night, so they literally will just leave in the morning because they, they don't want to, the ghosts getting into bed with them. Um, I've had members of the public in... Uh, customers who have told me that they've been poked in the shoulder 
whilst waiting at this main bar. Um, and then they've turned around and there's been nobody there. Just through here, Michaela. Becky's partner, Ben Fullwood, lives on the top floor of the hotel and is all too aware of the ghostly tales. I think I've lost count, really. Ben, you're the guy that has an apartment here. You That's sleep right. on your own at night here. What's it like, sort of sleeping in a in a haunted hotel and pub? Um, you can scare yourself, you know, a lot. I've, uh, the alarms have gone off sometimes at night, and I've had to go down and shut doors, and it can be quite frightening. But I've got used to it now, so I'm, you know, I'm quite used to quite used to having to deal with all the sort of strange noises in the middle of the night. Have you had any experiences yourself? Um, other than sort of. You know, other than sort of noises, I've not really had any great experiences, but I've heard some good stories as well. So if you just come through here, I'll just show you through here. This is where all the bedrooms are? Yeah, this is, uh, there's three, three more rooms back here. But yeah, I've heard some good stories. We had, um, we had one guest who was due to stay for a week, and after the first night he came down and said, I don't want to be here, and I thought it was something to do with the room. Um, when I asked him, he said no, it was because someone got into bed with him. What, a ghost got into bed with <laughs> yes. him? And he actually felt that? Yes, that's what he believed, yes. I don't think I'd want to stay in a room after that. No. I don't blame him. Um, and did he, did he just leave the hotel then? Yeah, he left. He, he paid up and left. <laughs> and we had another guy who, was, um, who we had to swap three times, so he changed his room three times, because uh, every room he went to, he said he, he, you know, he didn't like it, it was unsettled. Finally got him settled, uh, then when he left, he, see, he said he needed to go back to the room to get his toothpaste, uh, and the toothpaste was gone, and he thought the ghost had taken it. You look slightly sceptical about that story. <laughs> um, the toothpaste part, maybe, yeah. I mean, I am you know, fairly sceptical. I mean, I, you know, I sort of... All the staff believe there's, there's something here, um, but I've yet to experience anything first time myself. There's certainly no shortage of bizarre goings-on at the Angel but I was curious to find out who or what might be behind them. So what's the history of the angel? Um, I did look back into the history of the landlords and landladies. Um, there seems to be quite a, a focal fella called um, Thomas Holder, and he had a, a wife called Elizabeth Holder. Um, and I think that they might be something to do with it, because... There was a trial for a woman called Elizabeth Holder um, who was um, accused of murdering her newborn child. And actually, you know, we hear a baby crying here all the time. And on several occasions, Ben has thought that I've come in with our youngest and there's been nobody here at all. Two staff from the hotel, Stella and Paula, have had regular sightings of a ghost down in the kitchen. And in here, we have our regular ghost, uh, Fred. Um, he checks off the first aid box behind yeah. you. Quite what do you mean regular, though? He comes, he comes, he walks through here yeah. quite you see regularly. Him a lot. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he walks across yeah, the back definitely as across well. there, yeah. Time. Why do you call him Fred? Um, it's just a name that we've yeah. picked for him. And is, is he a, a friendly ghost, mischievous, angry ghost? Oh, no, he's a mischievous Genius, ghost. Yeah. He likes to uh, play with things. He plays with the phone. Yeah. Um, the phone. He makes that light up. So if you pick it up and say, Fred, go away, all the, all lights, the lights go, go, go off. off. Yeah. So you talk to him? Yeah, yeah we talk yeah, to him all, yeah, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Does he talk back? Um, I haven't heard. He's whispered in my ear occasionally, but yeah. can't really make out what he's saying. Oh, Fred, he's a nuisance. Um, he's seen off many of my staff. A, a lot. My night porter wouldn't stay. She, she, she did her job for maybe two weeks, and then she wouldn't stay. Um, she wouldn't be in this building on her own at night time at all. Is, is it an actual apparition that you see, or is it a shadow, or how does it's it appear like to you? It's just a shadow, really, I think. Yeah, just out the corner of your eye, you're just something seeing... Something that makes you, like, look towards that door, and then you're like, oh, there's nobody there. Or you hear the doors go, and it's like... 
You don't know who Fred might have been? No. no. I haven't got a clue on no. who he is, but he's he's really friendly yeah. ghost. Yeah. And how often do you see him? Quite regularly. Yeah. Most days, I Most suppose. Days. Most days. Yeah. yeah. My children refuse to stay here. They, they refuse to stay here and they will never, ever be separated on their own in one part of the building, ever. Um, so from their eyes, I would say that it's extremely haunted. I see, and, I see things and hear things a lot, but whether that's it being haunted or not, I don't know. But yes, there is definitely a feeling and a presence that sometimes makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, but often makes you feel like you're not on your own. I've had experiences up in the hotel. We used to stay here, and um, we had residents in the hotel. And all I could hear was girls giggling, music playing, people running up and down the corridor. And um, I thought, well, this can't be the residents because they haven't got any ladies with them. And I thought, well, the music might be coming from outside, so I checked outside. Nothing, it was deadly quiet outside. So I got back into bed, it started again. And then I said, look, Fred, take your party over into Magnum's yeah. and go and party <laughs> over yeah. there. Let me get some sleep. And it all went deadly quiet there. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> hilarious. So there are spirit parties? Yeah, yeah. there are spirit parties. Apparitions, orbs, things being thrown, EVPs. When it comes to paranormal activity, it seems the Angel Hotel is a very active and rather extraordinary place. Well, the Forest of Dean certainly has plenty of stories of ghosts above ground, but I'm now off to Clearwell Caves, an ancient iron mine which has lots of ghostly goings on underground. The iron ore mines date back to the Stone Age, some 4,500 years ago, and are still in use today. They reach down hundreds of feet under the Forest of Dean, and many miners over the years have reported seeing ghosts and having strange experiences in its caves and tunnels. The current owner, Jonathan Wright, agreed to get me suited up and take me down. This is the lamp room, Michaela. So we get kitted up here. Okay. If you follow me in. If you come in. So all the proper miner's stuff is, is here. What, do I have to put one of these on? Yeah, if you can, yeah. If you can put uh, a helmet and lamp on as well. Is this a working mine still? Yeah, we still mine ochre for making paints. We I sell do. it to artists. So, Jonathan, how long have people been mining the caves? A couple of hundred years or something? About four and a half thousand years. Four and a half thousand years? That well, is a lot of history. It's since the end of uh, the Stone Age. Yep. Gosh, methods of mining must have changed enormously in all that time. Oh, I've seen a lot of change over the years. So you've got thousands of years' worth of history down here. There must be some good ghost stories. There are, yeah. yeah. The locals um, particularly told stories about things that had happened down here. A lot of them would have worked down here, I suppose. If you come through here... So what's the main ghost story down here? Um, the main character that uh, people seem to repeatedly see is um, an old miner, and they used to call him the old man. He's an old miner that uh, was thought to have been trapped down here many years ago in an accident. It would have been perhaps in the 18th century. So uh, he was working in an area where the roof wasn't very stable, and he was supporting it with timbers, and it actually fell in behind him and um, unfortunately he got trapped. So the miners that worked with him came rushing up and started to dig. But when they dug, they found that it kept collapsing 
and uh, the fall had actually gone all the way to the surface, so there was no way out for him. After several days, they realised they weren't going to get him, and they just warded the area up. Oh, how awful to know that your, your work colleague is down there and your friend. They were desperate to get anybody out of here, you know, if they were trapped or killed, but, um, yeah, he's someone that's thought to still be here. And have people seen him in hauntings? Yeah, pe people have been lost down here when they've been caving, and uh, he's shown them the way out, yeah, supposedly. Um, well, as a spirit or...? or no, apparently or... Pe people have thought that he was a real person, but dressed in old-fashioned costume. So um, he's, he's obviously looking very real, um, but he never speaks, but he shows people the way out. And um, pe people have just been amazed, you know, to, to find that that person doesn't exist. We had an incident where there was a film crew filming um, and they brought all their cameras and lights into the bit that you know, we've been round. And um, they actually wanted to lay the cables around that route and they hadn't brought enough cable with them. And on their way up to come and ask us if there was a shorter route, they bumped into an old miner and asked him, and he showed them a route that was ideal and half the distance. But when they went to thank him after they'd put the cable through, he'd gone. And no one knew who he was. And they came up to uh, the surface and asked us about it. And we couldn't figure out who it was. And we asked them if they recognised any of us, and they said no. And so we've never found out who showed them the route, whether it's the old man or not. It does remind me of a story uh, that, that was probably one of the most bizarre experiences that I had um, down here. We were doing some drilling and um, I'd agreed with a friend of mine to go down and actually knock on the rock opposite to the direction that we wanted to make sure that I'd got the right direction to do the drilling. And so at a certain time he was going to knock on the rock and uh, give me an indication of which direction to go. And I looked at the watch and checked the time, and sure enough, you know, I heard the noise of him tapping, and I tapped back. And then I thought, right, I've got the direction, and I went out to go and see him. And um, when I got out there, he said, uh, oh, you're back already. I haven't actually been able to go down because my lamp's faulty, and I was trying to fix it. And um, so he hadn't actually been tapping. It was, well, I just don't know why I heard the tapping. But something was tapping. But there tapping. was something. It, it, it turned out to be the right direction as well. Um, so I had got a sense of direction from it, but how I'd heard the tapping, I just don't know. Tim and Adam from Forest Paranormal Investigations have also experienced some unusual goings on underground. Right down at the bottom, there's a place called the Rabbit Run, which is about a 30 foot long chamber. But you have to crawl on your belly through it, through a puddle, into what's called Pillar Chamber. And I went through there. Um, there's been known to be accidents as well down there, and there's been a few deaths down there over the years. Went down through there. As I came through into Pillar Chamber, there was a figure standing on the opposite side of the chamber to me. Uh, turned around, disappeared through one of the exits there. And I thought it was one of the guys, I thought it was Colin or John. But I looked around, there was no one, no one there. So I ran across to the other side of the chamber, went through the entrance, and there's just a, a wall there. There's nothing else there. So it just completely disappeared. From a technical point of view, it's very difficult to um, establish how haunted the caves are. Certainly, you cannot discount the number of witness statements about the same entity being seen in these caves. It's, it's just so difficult. I don't think it can be discounted the court at all. So I'd say, in some way, shape or form, definitely the caves are haunted. Local caver John Elliott has been down in the caves many times and is convinced that they're haunted. I have been down there on paranormal groups where I've sat silently in the dark and there was one trip with Adam where my bag, my black bag, we were in the dark not moving, it fell over and it dragged itself across the floor a bit, which was quite interesting. 
Any idea what that might have been? Well, we were asking for a sign that somebody was around. We felt there was, although I didn't, but they did. And that, I think, was possibly the sign. How haunted do you think the caves are? I'm a bit of a sceptic, to be honest. I'm not really convinced that the caves are haunted as such. But it does, every now and then, you get something that makes you wonder, because when you hear the noises down there occasionally that you can't explain, when people say that they, and these are very convincing people that you wouldn't think would sort of fabricate a story, um, you, you realise that perhaps there is more to things than meets the eye normally. Well, I think these caves are absolutely fantastic. So from haunted caves to ghostly goings on in inns and hotels, there's no doubt about it that the Forest of Dean is a great place for ghosts. Wouldn't it be great to think, though, that there was a ghost miner helping people find their way out of the caves? See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>